If you look for it, every day has cause for celebration. Celebrate a friend for their promotion baby wedding life thing. Celebrate yourself for keeping the couch warm. It's no easy feat, especially if it's a big couch. Or maybe you just want to celebrate living in 2023 where you can get beer, wine, and spirits delivered from Drizzly in under 60 minutes without leaving said couch. So download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com and get your favorite drinks delivered today. Hey, what's up? This is Sully from Godsmack. Strap on those boots, baby, because you are now in the trenches of the war room with the one and only Mistress Carrie right here on the Mistress Carrie podcast. What's up? This is Joe Rogan, and you're listening to Mistress Carrie. I have so lovely pretty eyes. Hey, this is Brent from Shinedown, and you're listening to Mistress Carrie. Hey, Carrie, go put your brow on, girl. Hey, this is Steven Tyler, and you be listening to the baddest bitch in Boston, Mistress Carrie. What's up? This is Aaron from Stan. And you're listening to Mistress Carrie. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, and you're listening to the one, the only Mistress Carrie. Hey, this is David from the band Disturbed, and you're listening to the baddest bitch in Boston, Mistress Carrie. Hi, Bruce Dickinson here from Iron Maiden. Yes, indeed. Miss Whiplash herself, Mrs. Carrie, is here to um, unchain your brain. Hi, this is Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and you're listening to Mistress Carrie. This is Dennis Leary. You are listening to my favorite, Mistress Carrie. Hey, this is Corey from Stone Sour, and you're listening to. You have the privilege of listening to Mr. Scary. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's Mistress Carrie reporting for duty from MCHQ for a bonus episode of the Mistress Carrie podcast. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Digital Federal Credit Union, better known as DCU, and they are hiring right now for full and part-time employees in their branch locations throughout Massachusetts and New Hampshire. So if you or a friend or a family member are looking for a career change or to start a new career, just log on to dcu.org slash careers. DCU is proud to be an equal employment opportunity and affirmative action employer. Well, the man is a legend. I'm talking about Billy F. Gibbons. Of course, he's a famous member of ZZ Top, but he is also getting ready to release his third solo album called Hardware on June 4th. And I had a chance to talk to Mr. Gibbons about playing the guitar, his legacy, his mighty beard, his songwriting style, Jimi Hendrix, Margaritas, hot sauce, and so much more. So allow me to introduce you to Billy F. Gibbons. Oh, yeah. Hello? Yes, indeed. How are you doing? Billy, it is such an honor and a privilege. Thank you so much for talking to me today. You've you've got it. We are are delighted, actually, uh, coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee today. Well, you are getting ready to release your album, Hardware, on June 4th. And as someone who has famously said out loud too many times, I have zero musical talent. So I'm very curious what your writing style is when you sit down to write a record. Because obviously after COVID, you've had a lot of time on your hands. Yes, I I think it's fair to say to start from the beginning. Uh, Most recently, uh, it came as somewhat of a surprise to... uh, hear from our guitar slinging buddy, Mr. Austin Hanks, and our fearless uh, drummer with the big bad backbeat, Matt Sorum. Uh, the two of them were sitting in the hot rod waiting to scoop me up and uh, drag me over to inspect the studio. And I uh, hopped in uh, thinking, well, 30 minutes, we'll you know, be in and out. We tiptoed into the control room Uh, 30 minutes turned into 30 days, which quickly turned into three months of uh, doing just that, uh, creating and and writing what was to become this new release called Hardware. It was uh, uh, quite an inauspicious beginning. Does your writing style change depending on who you're writing with? You've had so many different projects over the years and worked with so many amazing musicians. Yeah, it becomes quite the balancing act. As uh, most everybody knows, the uh, the setting for a uh, ZZ Top record has uh, 
some, uh, I guess, uh, familiarity to it. And when we step outside and uh, begin peeling the onion in new territory, we can get into some very interesting uncharted uh, zones, which uh, it's, uh, I, I think it's very supportive to, to that creative process. You never know what you're going to get. While you were working on hardware, there were a thousand people a day in the United States alone buying guitars for the first time. Do you have advice for the people that during the lockdown said, hey, I want to learn how to play guitar? Well, yes. Uh, Once you pick it up, just stick with it and uh, bang away. In fact, that's that's, uh, what we wound up doing uh, to start this project, Uh, of course. We, we had little more than uh, a piece of blank paper and a pencil, and the other hand was uh, searching for uh, that guitar. Although Matt found a, a set of drums in the corner, Mr. Austin Hanks and I uh, reached out and grabbed a couple of old Fender guitars. Uh, I guess the, uh, the uh, ironic moment was to discover we were playing uh, with the sounds of the 60s surf music, a very strange combination given the fact that we were miles and miles away from the nearest drop of water playing surf music. (laughs) That was strange. You've had such a long career. Does it shock you that vinyl is back with such a vengeance? Because this record hardware is coming out on some pretty amazing uh, vinyl colors, too. Yes, indeed. Of course, when you speak of vinyl, uh, we've, we've all been familiar with uh, the phrase, it's in the groove. And of course, when you pick up a piece of vinyl, that tactile experience alone uh, brings you straight right back to the groove. And uh, there you have it. <laughs> Do you still buy music yourself? You work with so many contemporary artists, too. Are you still a consumer of music, too? Yes. In fact, uh, as you and I began uh, speaking, I was reflecting on uh, a phrase that came back uh, just recently. And uh, someone said, hey, man, yeah, we heard about this new record, uh, Hardware. And uh, someone said, hey, man, yeah, you can get it wherever you collect and buy music. So, yeah, a vinyl is back. Uh, I've even heard people going back to cassettes, even the lowly eight track. I mean, wherever you go to get your music, that's where you got to head. When you have a career like yours that comes in cycles with rock music specifically, there's so many people that have been so vocal about rock being dead. What's your response to that? Well, they all they have to do is pick up a copy of hardware. We are hard rocking, <laughs> that is for sure. And uh, in no small part, uh, thanks to Mr. Austin Hanks, not only is he a great singer, but his guitar slinging is uh, fierce. And uh, you couple that with uh, what we throw at Matt Thorne. Uh, our little trio comes out uh, big and bold with uh, good Good hard rock and rock. It's, it is uh, front and center. Well, you've always had a knack of surrounding yourself with amazing musicians. So when you start talking about Austin and Matt, they're pretty powerhouse players themselves. Definitely. So we just finished up a nice bluesy thing with uh, Dion. Uh, he came back uh, uh, with, uh, he, he too had a, had a host of uh, guest uh, performers. Um, and I, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, when you gather the troops, the aim is to do it and do it right. Uh, that's what I liked about uh, the outcome of this thing we created in the, <laughs> seemingly in the middle of no- nowhere. When you're surrounded with nothing, the only way to break the spell is to start doing something, and uh, away you go. That's what. That's where you. That's where it went. The album comes out on June fourth, and then you get to do something bands haven't been able to do for a while, which is actually play live shows in front of a crowd. What is it going to mean to you to get back in front of your fans in person? 
Well, we're standing in line with uh, seemingly everybody else. The uh, good news is uh, things seem to be thawing out. It appears that the curtain is slowly rising. So, <laughs> yeah, let's get back to it. I'm ready to kick up the heels and make some, uh, go back to having some good times, make loud noise, and having a great, great time out. What do your fans mean to you after this amazing career you've had? What, what does their support and, and their love for you mean? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, when we go into the studio, it can be somewhat of a lonely experience. You've got four walls with no windows. Um, that's to say that we still have a great time making the, the uh, composition come to life. But it's the fans that make it fun. Without uh, our friends uh, gathered up, uh, I don't know how to say thanks uh, other than just that. We say thanks to our many friends and fans that uh, that make it a fun excursion. That's where it's at. Coming out of lockdown, there's a lot of dudes with beards for the first time. You are the OG master of a... Uh, an amazing beard. Do you have beard advice for these newbies? Yeah, the uh, the question always comes up: How do you how do you groom it? Um, are there any secrets to uh, you know uh, harvesting these chin whiskers? I guess the real question is: uh, Do you sleep with it under the covers or over the covers? The only answer I could come with is, I don't know. I'm always asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of guff from uh, a lot of my friends who say that I shouldn't put good tequila in a margarita and that I complain sometimes when hot sauce is too hot because I am a wimp with the heat. How do you feel about good tequila in a margarita and hot sauce being too hot? Because I view you as an expert on both. Well, we've got our own brand of tequila. Uh, you could search high and low, and uh, if you reach for a bottle with the label uh, Pura Vida, Pura Vida tequila, it's triple distilled. It's a, uh, a Blue Weber te- agave uh, tequila distilled from the highlands of Jalisco. It's the real deal. Uh, you can uh, take it straight. You can, uh, uh, of course, I'm favored. Uh, as you point out, uh, a good margarita is uh, is just that. And when you mention hot sauce, uh, I've also got to talk about uh, uh, a personal favorite. My my uh, partner uh, and songwriting uh, buddy here in Nashville, Tim Montana, and I came up with a recipe for some good hot sauce. Uh, we're more about the flavor. Yeah, there's enough heat to get your attention, but it doesn't outweigh the real reward, which is in uh, savoring the flavor. And uh, I don't know. I think uh, you get a good uh, you get a good feeling with uh, Pure Vita tequila straight out of the bottle. And the uh, same goes for Whisker Bomb hot sauce. <laughs> well, that's why I asked. And now that I know that you're on my side, I'm going to throw that in my friends' faces right back at them. So. Thank you. There you go. That's the way to do Yes, yeah, sure enough. It's the way to go. You're also an amazing car aficionado, and you have owned some unbelievable vehicles over the years. Obviously, the Eliminator made famous by ZZ Top. Uh, my dream car is a 66 black-on-black Charger. Do you think that's cool or, or no? Is that not old enough? Boy, heck yeah. Heck yeah, that is uh, right there in the uh, winter circle. That's uh, that's that's a good one. In fact, uh, as you point out, the uh, the Eliminator album cover featured our famous Little Red Hot Rod. We we followed suit with uh, the cover of the album Hardware features uh, the Eliminator's Bad Little Sister, uh, another thirty four Ford. Uh, uh, this one's fenderless, uh, of course, repowered and repainted. Uh, we slapped it on the album cover. But I do like uh, quite a wide range of uh, vehicles. And uh, when you brought it up, uh, I want to see you behind the wheel. Uh, the uh, the black on black, uh, did you say convertible? I, I mean, if they made a convertible charger, I'll get on it. The black on black with my purple hair, Billy, it's going to be badass. When I buy it someday. <laughs> let, 
let's go with it. I can't, I can't seem to beat that one. That's a, that's a winner. But you're, you drive your cars, right? You don't just have them to look at. You get behind the wheel, right? Well, it started back in the MTV days. And of course, everybody knows it was the girls that got to drive. Uh, we're just waiting on the keys. And yet, <laughs> uh, at the same time, not, now with, uh, with the release of hardware, I get to uh, slip behind the wheel of another 34 Ford, the Whiskey Runner. And, uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll have to meet you on the highway. Uh, you get, you charge large and, uh, I'll join you right beside. I look forward to that. Uh, when people found out I was going to talk to you, one of the questions that people always want me to ask over the years, of course, the legacy of Jimi Hendrix is, is folklore at this point. You're such a prolific guitar player yourself can you give me a, a guitar um, analysis of, of Hendrix and tell me something about his style of play that maybe listeners of music may not have picked up on from a musician's perspective? Yes, the legacy of Jimi Hendrix, uh, gosh, lives on. Um, as far as his playing style, there are uh, many stabs at attempting to explain it away, I think that it would be fair to say that his inventiveness when it came to uh, cradling that Fender guitar, uh, he started doing things with that particular instrument. I could just about say that the designers had no idea that it could be uh, turned into making the kind of sounds that Jimi Hendrix churned out. And uh, to this day, uh, we're fortunate that we can uh, revisit Jimmy uh, anytime we put the needle in the groove. Uh, he was doing it to it. It was uh, it was quite quite inventive to say the least. And uh, to this day, he's uh, he's so far ahead that uh, we're just trying to we're all trying to catch up. It's it's a great thing. Last guitar question for you, Billy. I read an interview recently with Nancy Wilson, who talked about how she was the first person to buy Eddie Van Halen an acoustic guitar. Do you at all play the acoustic to write, or are you always an electric guy when you when you work on your songs? I would say mostly uh, 99, 44, 100% electric, with, the, with a couple of exceptions. Uh, and I suppose it uh, kind of kind of comes back around full circle with with the release of uh, this new record hardware. We go back to a ZZ Top song called "Asleep in the Desert." Uh, the only the only time I was able to uh, find my way around a uh, it was a it was actually a very old Martin a gut string guitar, and uh, we we. We dusted it off, shined it up a bit, and you can hear it within the grooves of uh, a song called "Desert High" on the uh, on the new hardware release. It was our our closing number, I I uh, must say. Well, Billy, it was an honor and a privilege to talk to you today. Congratulations on the new album. It's called Hardware. It's out on June fourth. I can't wait to pull up next to you someday on the highway in my Charger, and obviously can't wait to see you in concert when you guys get back out on the road. You got a deal. We'll uh, pick a spot of wide asphalt and uh, make our way right on down the line. Uh, I look forward to seeing you. Uh, we'll cross paths right down the way there. Thanks, Billy. Have a fantastic day. All right. Have mercy. Billy Gibbons, the legend, on a bonus episode of the Mistress Carrie podcast. His new solo album, Hardware, comes out on June 4th. If you liked what you heard, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss anything with the Mistress Carrie podcast. Full-length episodes come out every Wednesday. This week, episode 50 features Jack Undercoffler from Dead Poets Society. And if you don't mind, leave a five-star review and a comment so I know what you thought of the episode. Every weekday, you also get the sit rep, which is all of your music news, your rock headlines, and industry info in less than five minutes. Huge thanks once again to our sponsor, Digital Federal Credit Union at dcu.org careers because they're hiring right now. 
You can join me every Tuesday night at 8.30 live on my Facebook page for my video show, Cocktails in the War Room. And if you're looking for anything, including official Mistress Carrie merchandise, you can just head to my official website, mistresscarrie.com. For all of the links about Billy F. Gibbons and ZZ Top and the corresponding playlist for this episode, just go to the show notes of this episode. The Mistress Carrie Podcast, a proud member of the Pantheon Podcast Network.